Hello students, hope you all are doing well. Uh, today we will start with the topic metals and non-metals. So all of you might have learnt uh, in the previous class related to metals and non-metals. We will learn more about the metals and non-metals. So metals are those metals, elements which have one, two or three valence electrons. That is metals are ready to share their electrons. They are like friends to other elements. So friends share, care, take care of each other. That is what they are able to donate their electrons. For example, we will take sodium that is atomic number with 11. So their electronic configuration is 2, 8 and 1. So you know that in the electronic configuration first shell will always have 2 electrons. The next shell to complete it needs to have 8 electrons that is octet and this is completed and they have, there is a third shell that is K, this is K, L and M shell that is M shell has one electron that it is going to share its electron. So you can see that they are ready to lose their electrons that's why they are known as electropositive ions. So sodium will be represented as Na+. So let's understand about non-metals. Non-metals never share their electrons. They are ready to take the electrons from the other elements. That is, they have the valence numbers that is 4, 5, 6 or 7. So electrons have their valency shell and they are ready to gain their electrons where they are known as electronegative atoms. So let's take the example of chlorine that is 2, 8 and 7. So you can see that here the first shell has 2, second shell has 8 and third shell has 7. So it requires only one electron to complete its shell. So it is ready to take an electron from the other metals. So we will start with a short story to understand how the metals are discovered. So to understand how the metals are discovered, are you ready to come with me to the old age or the early man period? So we'll go to the old age and understand our early man times to understand the story. So initially what we'll be observing, we might feel it as funny, but it's not funny. For them, it is a different task. So they might be using uh, the stones uh, to build on fire or for cooking, etc. But after some days, we are waiting there to understand them more. So we will understand that they, as they are using stones for putting on fire, for cooking activities, killing animals, etc. So one day what happens is a human being, that is an early man, he drops by mistake a stone. So a cling sound is heard. So he is astonished to listen to the cling sound. Oh, what is this? Again he puts down. So two or three times he puts down the stone to understand what it is he has never seen. So he understands that this is quite different from the stone. So what were the stone was he is not able to understand. So he sees that this stone never catches fire but it is changing its shape. Later on he decides that he will put the stone into the fire. He puts the stone into the fire. Again he is surprised to see that this stone will turn into red color then it is not building fire. Later on he sees that the stone is again melting in a high uh, fire and you can see that he takes it out and sees that after some time it is getting cool. So this is the story how iron the metal was discovered that is we are talking about the iron age. So I hope you have all understood the story how the metal iron was discovered. Let's go to the properties. This is how the property of metals came into existence. So now he came to know that. So let's understand the physical properties of metals and non-metals. So he came to understand that they are lustrous. That is the stone they got is shiny in nature. And the stone had a clinging sound that is sonorous in nature, it makes sound. And he also found that it is ductile and malleable in nature. So what did he find out? That the stone that he found out that 
represented as a metal is hard also in nature and it is red it can turn into cool it's cool on uh, cold conditions and hot when heated so this we understand about the metals let's understand about the non metals it's just the opposite of the metals that is they are less hard non ductile non lustrous thermal insulators and they have very low melting point so moving on to chemical properties of metals and non metals so let's understand about the chemical properties of metals and non metals first we will understand about metals when they react with oxygen so what happens when they react with oxygen they are going to form metal oxide so let's take an example that is sodium plus oxygen they form sodium oxide so in the same way metal oxides they are basic in nature you always know that basics that is they turn blue litmus red litmus to blue sorry uh, blue litmus to red and some metals are amphoteric in nature what do you mean by amphoteric in nature they have the properties of both acid and bases so let's understand the amphoteric nature of the metals by using with acid and base properties that is aluminum oxide when they react with sodium hydroxide it is a base they form sodium aluminum oxide and they release water so next the same metal that is aluminum oxide they are formed oxides we react it with hcl that is an acid it forms aluminum chloride and they release water so in later part of this uh, session we will understand the reactivity series so let's know that oxygen that is this sodium is more reactive with respect to magnesium magnesium is more reactive with respect to zinc zinc is more reactive with respect to the iron and least is the copper so now you might be having a question that why sodium and potassium are stored in kerosene so as we have told that it comes under the high reactivity series and they are very explosive they cannot survive in oxygen nor in water or any other nature they are explosive in nature so these needs to be stored in kerosene itself so in order to avoid the reaction with air we store sodium and potassium in kerosene so let's take some examples with respect to the reactivity series so when reaction of potassium with oxygen so when potassium reacts with oxygen what is formed they form potassium oxide as we have told that metal when reacts with oxygen they form metal oxide so next is we will see the reaction of sodium with oxygen so potassium and sodium are at the top of the reactivity series they are highly explosive and you can see that sodium metal forms sodium oxide when they react with oxygen so next comes the metal copper so copper does not react with oxygen at room temperature but when they burn or they are burnt in air they do react and they form copper oxide so let's understand now the least reactive metals that is silver gold and platinum so they are least in the series they are almost related to the noble gases they do not react with the air so you can see that metals like magnesium aluminum zinc oxygen sorry on react with oxygen to give thin protective layer so what happens here that when magnesium combines with oxygen they are oxidized to form magnesium oxide so iron does not burn with oxygen then what happens when iron filings are added to the air they burn vigorously so copper also does not burn but forms black copper oxide to form over it so at the end of the series or the reactivity series again we speak about the gold 
silver, mercury, etc., they never react with oxygen and when at high temperature. So, we have seen till now metals those react with oxygen. Let us understand non metals what react with oxygen. So, non metals they do not react with oxygen to form, so they react in the form that they form non metal oxide. So, non metal plus oxygen they give non metal oxide that is carbon plus oxygen gives rise to carbon dioxide, nitrogen plus oxygen gives rise to nitrogen dioxide and you can see that nature of non metals they are acidic in nature. So, when they are acidic they turn blue litmus to red. So, some of the metals are even neutral in nature they never turn red litmus to blue or blue litmus to red. So, till now we have seen the reaction of metals and non-metals with respect to the oxygen. Next coming on to the reaction of metals and non-metals with respect to water. So, water can be in different forms. Uh, so, like cold water, the normal water that we use or we can even heat the water and it can be in the form of steam. So, metals react with water. What do they form? They form metal hydroxide and the gas that is released is hydrogen. So, metal plus water this you need to remember always metal plus water gives rise to metal hydroxide and hydrogen gas is released. So, let us take the example here sodium plus water. So, always it gives rise to an hydroxide that is sodium hydroxide and there is a release of hydrogen gas. So, let us understand how the metals react with cold water as we have already told that in the higher reactivity series sodium and potassium are highly reactive. So, they burn vigorously and they and they go explosive. So, you can see that here hydrogen gas catches fire immediately. So, do not do any experiment with respect to sodium or potassium. So, calcium in the next series you can see here this is the reactivity series. So, you can see first comes the potassium, sodium, calcium. So, down the series the reaction lessens. So, you can see that least reactive element as we have told is silver, gold and platinum. So, next coming to the calcium that is third in the series. So, they are not so vigorous when treated in water. So, reaction occurs, but hydrogen gas is formed in the form of bubbles. So, let us understand now how these react with hot water that is metal reaction with respect to hot water. So, as we have told that sodium and potassium we will uh, keep aside because they are vigorous in nature, they do not react with water or oxygen. So, let us take the next one that is calcium and magnesium they react with hot water and some of the elements react with steam. So, those elements that react with steam are iron, zinc and aluminium. You can see here iron, zinc and aluminium. So, what happens when iron reacts with steam? So, iron when reacted with water, steam and water formula is the same that is H2O. So, it forms ferrous oxide and liberation of hydrogen gas. So, some of the elements even do not react with water. So, they are like copper, mercury, silver, gold and platinum. You can see here copper, silver, gold and platinum. They are at the least reactive elements. So, this is the apparatus with respect to the metal and uh, water reaction. So, you can see here that metal plus water we have already discussed that it gives rise to metal oxide and release of hydrogen gas. So, here we are taking a glass wool soaked in water and we are heating it using a Bunsen burner. So, here in front that is in middle of the test tube you are keeping a metal sample and you are heating it you can see that the water forms a steam and it goes and reacts with this metal then what is formed? It forms metal 
oxide and there is a release of hydrogen gas that gets collected in this tube. So this tube gets collected here and you can see the collection of hydrogen gas. So what happens here when metal oxide that is formed here when they react with water they form metal hydroxide. So till now we have seen uh, reaction of metals with respect to uh, water. So we will see with respect to the non-metals with water. So non-metals they usually do not react with water. So why they do not react is they need to displace one hydrogen that is for displacing this we have already seen that non-metals always accept the electrons they are not ready to donate. So that is not possible as they themselves are electron acceptors. So we have already seen about or we have known about the reaction of metals and non-metals with respect to oxygen and water. Now we will see how the metals react with dilute acids. So you might be knowing certain acids like sulfuric acid, uh, hydrochloric acid, nitric acid etc. So let's understand this. So metals react with acid, what do they form? They form their respective salt and hydrogen gas. So for example, sulfuric acid that is H2SO4 when reacts with zinc, zinc is a metal. See there is a single displacement reaction here. So you can see that zinc, it is formed zinc sulfate and release of hydrogen gas. So metals below hydrogen in the reactivity series, you can see here reactivity series, those metals that is below this hydrogen, they cannot displace or they are less reactive when compared to hydrogen. So non-metals usually they do not react as they can't displace hydrogen from its respective acids. For displacing they need to donate their electrons as we have told that they are uh, acceptors of electrons they do not donate. So some of the metals like uh, need to be forced to react. So let's understand how metals react with certain acids. We'll take some of the examples of uh, acids. So it is hydrochloric acid that is HCl. So let's understand when they react with sodium and potassium when we react it with HCl. So a metal when reacted with acid they give rise to respective salt but here hydrogen is formed but in the form of bubbles. So hydrogen is released uh, will burn and also oxidize the water. So make sure that there is a caution here I have already told that uh, in the reactivity series sodium and potassium are highly reactive and they are explosive. Never use these elements with hydrochloric acid they explode. So what happens when magnesium reacts with dilute hydrochloric acid? So magnesium plus HCl, so it's too easy to understand MgCl, see here MgCl2 plus H2. So you can see that hydrogen is getting liberated here. So what happens the same way we try to react aluminium with hydrochloric acid. So aluminium when reacts with hydrochloric acid, so you can see that aluminium chloride and hydrogen gas is released. So next comes uh, an example with respect to nitric acid. Its uh, formula is HNO3. So nitric acid reacts with metal and uh, again here we can see that rest of the part we have seen hydrogen gas is evolved but here hydrogen gas does not evolve. So here it is a good oxidizing agent. What does it form? So nitric acid forms nitrous oxides like NO, NO2, N2O. So it's nitrogen monoxide, nitrogen dioxide and nitrous oxide. So what is the chemical name of nitric acid? So it is nitrous oxide. So common name is laughing gas. So don't sit and laugh there. It's not so easy. It's laughing gas is dangerous for our health. So application is used. Uh, it's used in dentistry. So used as anesthesia. 
So you have to use it uh, very carefully. Prolonged usage might lead to death. So only metals, those react. See, we can see that till now we have seen sodium, potassium, magnesium, zinc, all these reacted. But here, the rest of the metals do not react with nitrogen, nitric acid. So it only reacts with magnesium and manganese. And reacting with magnesium and manganese, only hydrogen gases produced. So it was already told that in the reactivity series, the last elements are gold, platinum and silver. They do not react with either water, oxygen or acid. So if we need to react these acids, we need to force these acids into some other medium. So what is that medium known as? So they are known as aqua regia. So I will repeat it. These two, that is gold, platinum and silver, they do not react with oxygen, water and acids. They need to react with some other component. So that is known as aqua regia. The common name is royal water. So it is a fuming liquid and it is most corrosive substance in the world. So what happens here? Let's see the constituent or composition of aqua regia. Here it's 3 is to 1 ratio is considered. 3 parts of concentrated hydrochloric acid and 1 part of nitric acid togetherly added will form the aqua regia. So gold and platinum can only react with aqua regia. So now let's understand how do metals react with solutions of other metal salts. So metals, they react with other metal salts. So reactive metals, they can displace less reactive metals from their compounds in from solution or molten state. So what is that is metal A when reacted with salt solution of B. When we are adding into salt solution B, metal A is added. What is happening? There is a double displacement reaction. So it forms salt solution A and release of metal B. So let's understand. We take copper sulphate solution and we dip iron rod or iron nails in it. So on further reaction, what is formed is ferrous sulphate solution that will be green in color and copper gets deposited here. In the next video, we will uh, know more about reactivity series. Thank you all for watching.